All right, beloved. Let's carry on with uh, what counts the most. Uh, the major argument. Okay, now we come to uh, Roman numeral three. The major argument. Visualize your passage, please. It goes from one. This is a major argument. That's not for nothing that he says this here. So now Paul moves with the major argument after having stated the problem. Look at your outlines. Take your outlines with you because it has three, basically the ABC. So the major argument at the bottom of page one, capital A, the biographical argument, an independent revelation. Turn on B, page two, the theological argument, the failure of legalism. And part C, at the bottom of page two, the practical argument, the effects of liberty. And then uh, the Arabic number, um, the Roman numeral four, will be the conclusion. So that's why we call it the major argument, because uh, basically it is major. So we have been looking at A, B, C. And uh, this here, you want to make a note, will show that salvation is by grace through faith alone. Plus nothing. He will get into the major argument and we will get some valuable points for us that salvation is by grace through faith plus nothing. And I would like you to perhaps highlight that sentence in your note that salvation is by grace through faith alone plus nothing because it will basically help you to share your faith in a difficult time as this, okay? When you share your faith with the people dying on the sidewalk here that OD often uh, more than once a week type of thing, you share your faith with these people, you cannot say to these people, you need to become a member, or you need to go to church. You cannot even say that, that they need to go to church. They won't have time, they're gonna die before coming to church. They are too intoxicated, they are too deep in drugs like this. Are they savable? It's an absolute yes, but you need to come up with the proper gospel. It's not our work at this point to baptize these guys. I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. It's not what I'm saying. They're dying. Okay? They're dying. It's a little bit like those who die in the uh, 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 extensive unit, dying of this or dying of cancer, like some have died. They're dying. It's not time to be to fill a membership form and to agree with the Constitution. It's time to receive the Messiah. And salvation is by grace through faith alone. But faith has to have a content. And the content is not a denomination. The content is to place your faith in Christ. And you will debate that argument. And that's why, beloved, I'm, I'm this style right now, I, this church or this Bible school is located in, in a tough place, but it's a good place to be. I don't tell you how many times in a month I share my faith with people. I have the occasion, specifically when I walk home, instead of taking the car, the car is a stumbling block because you don't stop, you don't look at them. But when you walk, they are on the sidewalk right there. And often, without pride, I bent over and talk with them. I'm not interested in their story. Mm. I am not interested in their story. There is no truth in their story. They're too mixed up. If there is a place in their brain when they can comprehend the gospel, I go for it, stand up and go. No coffee, no sandwiches. Sounds rude. If they OD, the sandwich will be of no help. If they did, having thought about the Messiah, repenting in their own hearts, in the most miserable place that they can be, straight to heaven after the OD. For anything else, there is MasterCard. <laughs> there is good ministries to feed the poor. Go for it. If you feed them without feeding them with the gospel, you have done and achieved nothing. The biographical argument, an independent revelation, 11 to 17. Number one, 
and dependent of human teaching, 11 to 17. Come with me in that case, since it's not divided, I read. For I would have you know, brethren, that the gospel which I preach, by, what, what, uh, the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but I receive it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my former manner of life in Judaism, or the Jews' faith. Do you have the Jews, um, Debbie? You must have something else instead of Judaism. No, it's my former conduct in Judaism. Okay, in Judaism. How I used to persecute the church of God beyond measure and try to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism, circle so advancing in Judaism, beyond many of my cont contemporaries among my countrymen, being more extremely zealous for my ancestral traditions, circle so ancestral, ancestral traditions. But when God, who has sent me apart even from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, was pleased, to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went to Arabia, circle Arabia, and returned once more to Damascus. Here Paul comes to the first major argument. And the main point of what I just read is that he received an independent revelation. He received an independent revelation. Right here in 11, he starts, verse 11, he starts his autobiographical summary. He starts it there, autobiography, and it's going to last until 221, chapter 2, verse 21. Why does he do that? It's because there was a denial of other people, specifically the Judaizer, there was a denial of Paul's independent standing as an apostle. There was a denial of Paul's independent standing as an apostle. Some were doubting him as being an apostle. Simply put, also, Paul's gospel is the gospel of God concerning his son. Paul's gospel is the good news of God concerning his son, capital H. The gospel of God concerning his son, verse 11. For I would have you know, brethren, that the gospel which I preach by me is not according to man. How did he get this gospel? You know that. What word do I need to put here? Revelation. Yes, but in specific, on his way to yeah. Damascus. Okay. On his way to Damascus. He had an encounter with God. It's not given by men. And he received what we call the law-free gospel. You know that gospel is good news. He received the law-free gospel. And he insists that he got it from divine revelation. Paul insists that he got it from divine revelation. And he makes the point that he did not receive it from man.
because you very well know that no man ever, even the most smartest person, past, present, and future, can come up to frame such a thing as the gospel that we know. That God was sent his son to redeem mankind. No Einsteins of ever time can come up with such a thing. Because it's God's provision, it's not man's provision. Very important to note that. It's God's vaccine against sin. It's not one that has been quickly modeled or whatnot or invented. It is God's provision. No man can come up with this. Make a note. All human, ma human made religion teaches salvation, uh, salvation by works. That's the human mindset. In Judaism, the guys at the wall right there, you keep this, you will be saved. Same with Mohammed. In, uh, I'm having a blank, help me out. Uh, Muslimism, Muslim, the Muslim religion. Islam. By works only. Pardon me? Islam. Islam. By works only. Even Mohammed, did you know that? On his dead bed was not sure if he was going to heaven. Did you know that? No. I studied Islam because of the doctorate. Even Muhammad himself, when he died, he was asked, he said, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it. Why? There is no grace, only works. So just to show you that what mankind came up with, such as Roman Catholicism, you need to do works. But the gospel of Paul here, it's a grace, a law-free gospel, the free gift of God. And no man can come because you know the tendency. I invite you for supper, then you will feel pressure to invite me after that. We like to pay God. And that's what the Judaizer wants to do right now. Get circumcised. Uh, yeah, but I'm saved by grace. No, 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 you need to add to it. It's our tendency. That's why now you will feel free to share your faith with your clients, with your people on the street, <coughs> with your workers. Don't burden them. Give them the law-free gospel. That's the case also in Christendom. Many have a hard time to accept the gospel for what it is. Even in our realm here. I've seen it with my own eyes. We, we have reached a point where we don't believe in predestination. Lots of people struggle. The faith, the Christian faith struggle with predestination. But that's a fact. You have been chosen beforehand to be a recipient of God's grace. Don't have any words. Say it in Hebrew. Tada. Thank you. But we like to argue, yeah, but God doesn't want our He wants us. And He wants us to accept what He has given us. Which is free for all the people. The street people here, won't, they don't have money to pay you. Give them what is free. Again, same elements they have. Baptism, church membership, tongues, and so on. That's what they call the Judaizer, the full gospel. Since for them, true faith alone doesn't work. It's a partial gospel. So make it full. Ah, yeah, but you have to do this, you have to do that, and you have to... So now they're happy. It's adding human poison in it. It's not about what we think. It's about the gospel of Christ, which is a full gospel to begin with, undiminished, no addition, no subtraction. Verse 12. 
For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Again, this experience to Damascus. As far as I know, when he was met on the way to Damascus in Acts chapter 9, he was not going to attend a Bible study, was he? He had a, an encounter. Okay? And it, has, it, it was a disclosure from heaven. He learned the truth and the word is unmediated. No mediation, no mediator in between, like a man. Got it from the from divine. Okay. His only teacher concerning the gospel was Yeshua. And then he went to Arabia in verse 12. In verse 13. No, uh, the, 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 in verse 17, but I'm not there yet. Okay? I will say more in Arabia in verse 17. 13 and 14, for if you have heard of my former manner of Judaism, how I used to persecute the church of God beyond measure and try to destroy it. Verse 14, and I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my countrymen, being more extremely zealous for my ancestral tradition. Remember the life of Christ, those who do that with me? The word advancing here in Judaism, we had a pickup truck, not a pickup truck, uh, uh, an SUV called a trailblazer, Chevy trailblazer. That's exactly what the word advancing in Judaism means, trailblazer, because Paul was a Tanahim, a teacher that was building the fence around the law. Extremely zealous, he was inventing rules in order to protect the law. That's the famous uh, traditional law, the Mishnah, that I teach when I teach the life of Christ. He was that type of person. He was that type of person. So I'm teaching you this just to show you that nothing predisposed Paul to receive Christ. He was working completely contrary to a predisposal to receive Christ. That's why I said on his way to Damascus, was not going to attend a TSM's Bible study, was going there with a letter to kill and to bound into prison the Christians. And here he was adding to the scriptures with the Mishnah. So do you call it a, pre a predisposed heart to receive Christ? He was against grace. When he says here in verse, uh, I was advancing in Judaism, make a note about Judaism, which he was advancing in Judaism, but not Judaism proper, not Mosaic Judaism, but Mishnaic. Mishnaic Judaism, or if you prefer, it's all the same, Pharisaic Judaism. The oral law. He was not having a heart disposed towards grace. And that's why being involved so much in such a thing, he was for many Christians alike and non-believers, a doubtful character. They were doubting his salvation. They could not believe that this man was not teaching grace now, was teaching grace now. In verse 13b, and I uh, used to persecute the church of God beyond measure and try to destroy it. To destroy it, it's to devastate it, which is impossible. But that's not what he was trying. References, Acts 8, verses 1, 2, 3. Acts 8, verse, verses 1, 2, 3. Acts 8, verses 1 to 3, and also Acts 26, verses 9 to 11. In verse 14, at the end, when he says, For my ancestral traditions, write down in your note, ancestral tradition equals this. 
exclusively. Why do you uh, Jesus said to the Pharisees, you violate the word of God to hold on to your trads. That's this. Purely and simple. It's the Mishnah. What's the point of the teaching of verse 13 and 14? I just wanted to show you that he was saved by grace through faith alone, but nothing predisposed his heart prior to his conversion. Nothing predisposed him to the pure gospel. So that's why he, he did not receive it by man. It was divine revelation. Fifteen to seventeen. But when God had set me apart even from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, was pleased. You might have your Bible, saw fit. Where was I? In verse fifteen. Saw fit to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, such as Matthew, Peter. But I went away to Arabia, circle Arabia, and returned once more to Damascus. His apostleship and salvation, or his salvation and apostleship, was predestined by God. From the mother's womb, that's why I stand against the abortion. At conception, he was set apart to be an apostle and to be saved. Or if you prefer to change the order, first to be saved and becoming an apostle. Doesn't matter the order. Why? Because he saw it fit. Do, is that, Debbie, what you have in your Bible? Saw fit? No. No. Did you change your Bible, sister? Because usually you have a slight this, this is the, uh, New American standard? The, no, New King. Okay, sometimes you're different, but on this one I realize that you are faithful to mine, actually. Um, he, he saw fit, in verse 15, was pleased. And the saw fit is for you also. You're not an apostle, Brendan. But you have been saved in the same way that Paul was saved. Why? He saw it fit to save you. Ooh, it goes down like a dry two by four in the throat. Accept it. He saw fit to save you, Ernie. Don't try to explain me, explain me why. He saw it fit. For his own glory. Because he wants to glorify himself through you. Why me? It's questioning the maker. Have you ever done pottery? You do quilting, eh? You guys are quilters, no? Who's quilter? She's heavy in quilting and quilting. Is the quilt telling you what to do? <laughs> Have you ever heard a word from this? You do me like this. It's half an inch there. Does it talk to you? Who's quilting? So let the quilter be in charge. How come you have made me with a thick French accent here and with the character that I have? Who am I to argue to the quilter? All of his experience to Damascus here. You have similar situation to that choosing in the Old Testament. Make a quick reference. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 9. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. I'm talking about specific Damascus encounter. Similar to this only. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 4 to three eleven. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 4 to 3. 11. Similar encounter. (coughs) 
in verse 16, to reveal his son in me so that I might pre preach among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult or confer with flesh and blood. Okay? He did not confer with any Jewish believers at that point, according to verse 16, not at the point of the encounter. He did, uh, nor did he go to Jerusalem to other apostles, not at that point. And it's easy to think that this is the, the same gospel as Peter had because they got it from God also. We will come back to that in a moment if we have time or next week. He went to Arabia. That's why I circle Arabian verse 17 here. Most likely it's the Nabataean kingdom. It's not Saudi Arabia. It's the Nabataean kingdom here at the bottom by the Dead Sea, past the Dead Sea. It's sure. not... Yeah, part of Jordan, but at that time it was called the Nabataean Kingdom here. That's neighborhood, the neighborhood of Damascus of the south into modern day Hejaz, Ajaz right now. It's called Ajaz. Okay. And it's very possible that for the time that he stayed there, he was trained by God in the same way that Moses and Elijah did. It's very possible that he was trained by God in the same way that Moses and Elijah did. Moses never received his training from the school of the rabbinate and so on. The last point before we close here, independent of the Judean, Judean, Judean churches. I'm right at the bottom of page one. I will leave you with this. Independent of the Judean churches. Judean, it's right here. Look, the Judean churches, that's Judea, meaning right in the vicinity. You have Jerusalem right here in Judea. So that's the Judean church's vicinity here. Okay, so that's where the church began, basically, in Acts chapter 2. So it was independent of the, the Judaism, Judea, Judean churches, 18 to 24. Let's read verse 18 only. Then three years later, I went up to Jerusalem to become acquainted, circle acquainted with Cephas. It's Peter there. And I stayed with him 15 days. This is the second point of his autobiographical argument. What he makes by making this remark here, three years later, I went up to Jerusalem to become acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days here. His point is that he was already an apostle before going to Jerusalem. He became an apostle on the Damascus road. An apostle is a sent one with the authority of the sender. He became an apostle right at conversion. Salvation apostleship right away. So he was already an apostle before meeting with Peter. Cephas and Simon is the same person, okay? Peter, Cephas and Shimon, it's the same person. And the point of his visit, it was to be acquainted with him. Why Peter? Because we know that he was the chief apostle of the twelve. Paul was mainly the primary apostle of the group of twelve, because Paul was not an apostle of the first circle. So he went to be acquainted with Peter. Whatever happened during these two weeks, 15 days, nothing could modify the certainty of Paul's affirmation that he received his gospel directly from Christ. 
nothing could modify that. Whatever happened during those two weeks, they were in agreement that he received his apostleship and salvation from divine revelation, directly from the Messiah. Though no intermediary, no mediator. Listen to verse 12 again. For I neither receive it from men, nor was I taught it, but I receive it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. So no intermediary. Uh, how do you say that? Mediary? Intermediary. Intermediary. Thank you so much for helping me out with this. In verse 19, but I did not see any other of the apostles except James, the Lord's brother. This is not James, John's brother, but this is the James, the author of the book of James there. The half-brother of Jesus Christ. The James there is the author of your book of James in the Bible. He was an apostle also because he saw the resurrected Christ as well. But he was not part of the twelve apostles, James. They believed in Christ only after his ascension. So what he does in verse 20 here, now in what I'm writing to you, I assure you before God that I'm not lying. No, I'm not. No, I'm good. I'm not lying. Okay. So basically, he's reaffirming the truth that his gospel was not a man-made thing that he came up with, like the Judaizer. So Paul here is simply reaffirming, after having stayed with Peter here, that it was not a man-made gospel that he had. After these two weeks, then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. Right after these two weeks, he went to the region of Syria and Cilicia. Do you know how long he stayed there before reappearing on the scene? Ten years. Ten years before reappearing on the scene. It's a tremendous gap. You have 10 years of complete absence of Paul when he went to Syria and Cilicia. Before he reappears on the scene. We know that from Acts and so on. Verse 22. I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. He was totally unknown by sight. They heard about him, but they never met them among the churches of Judea. He was mostly unknown to the churches in Jerusalem and Judea. But only, in verse 23, 23. But only they kept hearing. He who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith, circle the faith, which he once tried to destroy. I like, you should cherish the expression the faith in the first century right here. When they say the faith, I kind of like that. The faith here. Because the church was an infant here in about 50 AD or 50, the age 50 of the common era. And they call it the faith, which is a synonym here of the gospel. An infant gospel. A pure gospel. That is now starting in that year, 50, around 50 AD, to be distorted. So how much more this Constantine Dark Ages, Reformation, Great Missionary Movement, and now how much more the teaching of Galatians is important for that era so that we churches today may present to our people outsider in the world a pure gospel. 
And in verse 24, and they will glorify God because of me. Another point, as I finish with these two statements right now, the main point is that he did not get this gospel from the Jerusalem church. He did not get his gospel from the Jerusalem church, nor from the Judean church. Says he was independent of them. And in that case, he was independent from them. In that case, it's good for Paul to be independent from the Judean churches and the Jerusalem church because he is the apostle of the Gentiles. Gentiles. So it's good that he received divine revelation from Christ. It's not a church training. Not that it's bad at church running. It's not what I'm saying right now. But he received an independent revelation. So what he will be preaching to the Gentiles throughout his ministry will not be tainted by any kind of Judaizer of that kind of so forth. Because he was the apostle of you, Gentiles, us. Okay? He was not part of any church fathers and stuff like that that might have distorted something as early as the year here the judaizer although he was the worst judaizer prior to his conversion so you can gentiles can listen to this man as well as jewish people can listen to this man quite accurately i'm going to leave you on this thought-provoking thinking as far as why is he so ever so reliable how come and during just a question don't answer how come during his ministry in acts and we will see that later on he allowed it Timothy to be circumcised and he did not allow titus to be circumcised uh. to be back with these things later Gracious Father, we give you thanks for your patience and the love and the passion that we have together for the text. I'm asking you those who are committing mileage from different places on island, Arnimoon Bay, Shemanus, and so forth, Crofton, to come and study together even if we don't interact much here, still yet there is a fellowship happening. Despite our disagreements, different personalities, accent, we love each other in that place. We need to praise God for the common interest that we have, an interest in the text. Bless the people in front of me, I'm asking you to prosper them in every way. To prosper them who commit to watch these things online in every way. We give you thanks, Father, until we meet again according to your standards and will. That would be nice to go home. But if we have to meet it again in seven days, let's get prepared. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, I know that all of you do their part. Uh, I don't know what's happening in September, <laughs> but I know that it's coming to an end slowly. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much in advance for your support. God bless you. One more question. Uh, the ten silent years, when exactly did they take place? I didn't quite understand the time frame of that. I will be, let me go back to answer your question properly into Acts need to show you that gap of 10 years because he reappear of the scene you need to do the math according to where we are at now and the date of the first missionary journey yeah. well you knew it you said it but i did not get it so if you'll yeah. tell me the time frame when did it happen before he went to syria after he went to syria while he, he stayed in syria for 10 years sorry he stayed in syria and cilicia for 10 years after, 
after the two weeks with Paul, yeah. uh, with Peter. With Peter. Correct. He went to Peter to meet, yeah. but he never started his ministry right there. The first missionary journey will come later, oh, 10 years okay. after. But at that point, he went to Syria and remained in the 10 years, and there will be even more because he will come back and not embark right away. And we will see that in the book, actually, 14 years later. But now right there, I don't know where to find it right now. My mind goes too fast. You will see a scriptures coming down. 14 years later, I'm going to try to find it. Chapter 2, verse 1. Then after an interval of 14 years. Chapter 2, verse 1, the same book. Chapter 2, verse yes. 1. Oh, he went again to Jerusalem that's it. Barnabas. That's it. At least 10 years in Syria, then preparation, and then journey. Uh -huh.